This is the temperature probe attached to the cord. And the main on off switch under this weatherproof cover. Down is on and up is off. Power button, timer button, menu and selection, mode and back button, and the temperature control and screen movement. Light touch is all it takes to turn it on. The two bars indicate it's in the high 1500 watt setting. You change that here by hitting the menu, bring up the power mode, hit the menu button again to select it, then go down to the arrow and change it with either arrow between 750 or 1500. Then hit the menu again to choose that. OK. Then you have to hit the back button to get out of that setting. One bar shows we're in the lower 750 watt mode. And we'll go back, hit the menu, hit it again to choose that. Go to power level 2 or the 1500 watt setting, hit the menu again for OK, and then we've got to hit the back button to get back out of that. It's a lot of work just to change the uh, power level. Mode chooses among three settings. You got the moon for eco, and the snowflake is antifrost, and the sun is comfort. In the comfort setting, which you would use in the daytime, you can choose from 76 to 96 degrees Fahrenheit. It will remember that setting until you change it. Hit the mode button again and go to the moon, which is eco. It has a 55 to 96 degree range. Once you choose that, you can use that at nighttime. And then hit the mode again. The snowflake is antifrost. So this is what you would put it on just to keep things from freezing up. Its range is only from 34 to 54 degrees. Once you've chosen your settings for the three modes, it will remember them even when powered off. Let's go back to comfort. 1500 watts, 96 degrees, which they recommend for a cold room until you get it up to temperature. You'll feel the heat coming out of it almost immediately when after turning it on. The timer button goes up in increments of one hour up to 24 hours. It will turn it off for you. For the child lock feature, you hold both of the arrow buttons down for three seconds and that locks the control panel. Hold them down again for three seconds and it unlocks it. Light touch of the power button is all it takes to turn it off. And since it only takes an accidental light touch to turn it back on, you should turn off the main switch. The hottest part of this thing is at the very top. I got readings of 193 degrees at 1500 watts and 141 at 750 watts. Coming out of the grill, I got readings of 160 on high and about 130 on low. Coming out of the panel, 123, 102. The bottom edge has got a grill where the cold air gets sucked in. The back side has a wall mounting bracket if you choose to go that route. It's very lightweight. The very small casters only roll forward and backward. They have to slide side to side. The manual dedicates a whole page to what they call a wall mounting template it's even got a level line, but it's not to scale. So it's not a template, it's just a drawing showing you hole placement. Comes with a sticker over the control panel that gives you some pointers. A more serious warning label on the back. The warning that's missing here is children should not be allowed anywhere near this thing when it's operating or even plugged in. At 1500 watts, this pulls 12 and a half amps. At 750 watts, it's going to pull half that at about six and a quarter amps. But that's at 120 volts. If you're running a little lower, uh, it's going to pull more amperage. For example, at 110 volts, it's going to pull a little over an amp more than that. This is a serious load. The plug is going to get warm. 
If it doesn't fit tightly into a receptacle, that receptacle needs to be replaced. A loose connection equals resistance, that equals heat, and that equals fire. I like this and I'm giving it five stars, but that's only for people who respect the dangerous potential that space heaters have.